life is too short for ordinary music. Jazz on WRFG Atlanta. just wanted to uh, welcome you to WRFG. We're going to talk about the uh, CD, Place of Music. In fact, uh, the opening track that we did is from Gary's CD, and it's called? The uh, CD is called Seasoning, and that track was Winter Wonderland. And um, it, Gary, how do you come about deciding, I mean, as much as there has been written in holiday songs, and, and how do you decide what's going to be on the CD and your favorite one? Well, with this project, it's sort of a, um, a collection of songs that we've been doing over several years and um, actually started uh, that particular arrangement um, maybe five or six years ago. And uh, each Christmas I'd pull it out and work on it a little bit and it's like, no, it's not ready. I put it away until the next year. And uh, so we ended up with uh, a series of songs that we've been kind of developing and uh, we got to a point where this year, in looking at all these things, and said, you know what, I think we've got something that kind of has a, a uh, unified sound and focus. And we decided to put them all together and see what we, you know, see how they would uh, turn out. And, you know, I, I've been to several of your uh, holiday jazz vespers, and I guess it, you got tired of it, me repeating it. Gary, when are you going to do something? <laughs> this is wonderful. This is you, awesome. Yeah, you've been on my case for a minute about that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's like, you know what? I need to go ahead and just listen to Phil and go ahead and get this thing done. So. <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate you and, uh, and, in fact, both of you. Veronica, how are you doing tonight? I could not be better. I'm with Captain Mello <laughs> and Brother Ralph. <laughs> Well, we can end the show now. She just picked me up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I really enjoy the, uh, the vocals on there. And uh, it really, the warmth of the, of the CD is what really gets you. Because, you know, I'm a collector of holiday jazz and Christmas jazz. And I've heard some of the best and I've heard some of the worst. And, uh, but you all have really done something very special, and I hope our, our listening audience will uh, tune into it as we're playing some of the tracks. Well, let me start with you, Veronica. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, a place not necessarily known for jazz, uh, but certainly uh, Birmingham has a rich history of uh, music. Uh, and meaningful songs, I think, maybe born out of the civil rights movement. And so this feels like a natural extension. And Gary, yourself? I'm not too far from there in a little small town called Anniston, Alabama. And uh, same sort of thing. I grew up um, with, um, uh, my mom was a pianist and uh, played uh, sacred music. And my dad liked uh, his blues records and that sort of thing. So, uh, again, they really wanted to expose us to a lot of art and you know, music and that sort of thing. And uh, so where did the desire to learn piano come from? It, was it a musical family? Uh, it was. As I said, my mom played, uh, my sisters played, and uh, my mom and I had a discussion about that many years later, and it's just something that she always had a an affinity for and a passion for it. So um, just, uh, I think, mainly uh, mainly from her and just for whatever reason, just the sound of that instrument and that just really appealed to me. And when I was a teenager, I started hearing hearing this, this jazz sound. I was like, man, this uh, sounds like these cats are really dealing with something. I don't know what it is, but I'm about to go find out. And <laughs> I've been on that journey for a long time. <laughs> so, and enjoying the discoveries, just, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the process. So when you first learned piano, did you were you self-taught or did you take piano lessons to start with? Um, I, I initially just playing, you know, because we had the instrument there in the house, so I just fooled around with it. But then uh, when I was about 10 years old was when I started taking formal lessons. And uh, uh, lessons from there on in, sure. And you're an everlasting student, aren't you? Oh, always. <laughs> always. And you're constantly listening and checking out the music. You know. Really? Huh. And how about you, Veronica? I know that um, 
uh, I read your bio and everything, but I'd like you to tell our listening audience. When did you discover that you wanted to sing? Well, uh, I actually grew up in a Lutheran church in Birmingham, Alabama, so Gary often kids me about that because he doesn't associate swing with um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, um, particular um, rigid religious sway. Um, but I've been singing since I was a child. I also play piano, um, but I play by rote. I don't improvise like Gary does. And so my mom would, both my mom and dad would have me play piano while my sisters would sing and march us from church to church to do our act. Um, and then it just sort of developed from there. I played some in Birmingham, lived in Fairbanks, Alaska for a while and played with the funk band. And it was when I, while I was in that band that one of the members said, well, I want us to start doing some of this music. And he handed me a CD and Sarah Vaughn was singing watch what happens and that changed me forever <laughs> who is this <laughs> and and then i was hooked and so i i still consider myself very much a student of the music uh, and have a, a large appreciation for it so that even if i did not have this terrific opportunity to perform uh, i would be completely content just listening to gary all day well, you know, you have to. I have to join in there because I enjoy them also. It, it's amazing the uh, the music that comes out of the piano when he sits down to the keys. And how did you guys meet? Now that, that's an interesting story, I'm sure. Uh, we actually were introduced through a mutual friend, and uh, uh, he had known me uh, when I was, I guess, when I was in college, and. Uh, uh, knew that I was an aspiring, you know, musician, so he was always, uh, uh, you know, trying to turn me on to different music and that sort of thing. So he's constantly giving me records and sheet music and, man, check this out and check that out. And um, he found out that I was going to be coming to Birmingham uh, to do a concert. And uh, I guess he told Veronica about yeah, it. He was actually, I was singing with a big band in Birmingham, and he was the pianist mm -hmm. for that band and said, hey, there's this guy, Gary Motley, who's going to be playing um, at the club. You really should check him out. And so, well, I did. So, <laughs> and here we are. This evening is the name of the CD, and uh, 10 years later, you know. <laughs> and, you know, and you all have to see these guys together. You know, when I first met them, I thought they were newlyweds. I hadn't realized that they had been together as long as they had. But they are so loving and respectful of one another and have a relationship that you can see miles away that's, you know, very real, uh, very delicate, and, and uh, just these guys really love one another, you know. And I always like to see them together. You know, I can imagine them skipping down a path and taking some flowers. <laughs> I tried to cut that skipping thing out. Eh? I was getting yeah. nervous when yeah, Gary you know, was doing all that skipping. The talking about you when they start, you know. Start, <laughs> all right, dude, you know, you have to get back to, you know. So, uh, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been um, um, a, very, um, a very cool um, association relationship and, and everything. And I think the, one of the neat things about it is, is – Yes, that healthy mutual respect for each other and for the music. And that's really, I think, a cool thing for both of us, you know, because, um, as you say, we're both students of the music, and, and uh, that, makes it, that makes it really fun. Yeah, it does. So. I know when it came to, you know, myself looking for a mate, I prayed, I said, she's got to like jazz. <laughs> 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 Everything else is standard. If she okay. cooks fine, no, I can cook. You know? Okay, but she, she got to like jazz. Okay. You know? Well, well, for anyone who's seen Ray, she does a lot more than like likes jazz. Yeah. She's pretty incredible. She's very cool. <laughs> very cool. But okay, so you guys met, okay, and how did you end up here in Atlanta? Well, I was, you know, um, I've been here in Atlanta for the last ooh, twenty-two years, I guess. So, and just, you know, making the decision uh, where we wanted to be, and we decided, you know, that we wanted to, 
to uh, be here in the city because we, we enjoy being here. There's some wonderful opportunities here. And uh, so that was the, the next logical step. And it's been uh, a great experience for us. I've had some opportunities to work with some really incredible musicians. It's been a great place to be based out of. And uh, I've tra we've traveled all over the place. And uh, it's always nice to come back here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I enjoy you know, I get my energy fixed when I want to go to New York. You know, um, you can do your international thing, and then you come right back to Atlanta, and, and uh, it's just a, a very nice place to be. And Veronica, what's your professional background as well? Uh, well, I have <laughs> I have multiple identities. I work as a psychotherapist. Um, I also work as a counselor, educator, and supervisor, and mental health clinician. Uh, we were very excited because as of Friday, um, I completed a doctoral degree. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a life back. And, and actually, um, the completion of that afforded uh, both of us the opportunity to concentrate on music again. Um, because we were both uh, pretty, I guess, distracted with other life events. And so after we sort of had this gap, we thought, we need to get it on tape. We need to go record. And so we did over the course of uh, one month, and seasoning is the result of that. Wow. And, and Gary, you are at Emory, and your background is what, and, and what do you do at Emory? Um, Again, my background is uh, uh, with uh, degrees in music and uh, and jazz studies. So I uh, actually have developed the uh, jazz studies program at Emory, and uh, also uh, combining jazz with uh, technology, I've developed uh, what we call the jazz studio there. And uh, we we find some non-traditional ways to teach traditional jazz. Uh, everything from dealing with uh, um, podcasting to um, uh, just a lot of social media and using social media as a way of, of getting students informed about the music. So uh, we're building the program with that and, and educating kids about this art form. Uh, the main thing is, you know, we certainly, for those who are really interested in it, want to cultivate some students who are going to go out and make an impact uh, in this business. But at the same time, we also want to put people out there who help a uh, healthy appreciation for this music because those are the people who will be in Washington lobbying to support the arts and, and different arts uh, agencies so that we ensure that this music continues. Wow, that's fantastic. And that is, um, that can be very attractive because students today you know, are very much into social media. In fact, I bump into them all the time while they're potting oh, and yeah. listening oh, yeah. and texting, <laughs> excuse me, you know. And, oh, yeah. uh, but that is exactly the direction that things are headed, you know, using yeah. those, uh, those tools to be able to promote, listen, and uh, like you said, lobby and, and just, and we need those next generations of listeners, supporters of the art form, performers, you know, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So if we've got them out there and they're, and they're tweeting and they're on Facebook talking about Coltrane, then hey, that's that's exactly what we need to be having. That's right. Uh, that's very cool. Very cool. And uh, Veronica, you and how do you find the time? You guys are, are, are very productive and very active. How do you schedule yourselves to be able to accomplish the things that you do? I, I know where it started, sort of the intensity of it was actually, for both of us, I think, attending the funeral of Maynard Jackson, Maynard Jackson. yes, several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just remember a parade of people approaching the podium and, and talking about the importance of making every moment in your life meaningful. And we left that funeral just thinking, hey, we we've got to do something with our lives and it feels like we've not stopped since. I don't know if Gary shares that feeling. But yeah, that, that was, um, it was a really poignant thing because all of these um, famous people and that was the one thing that they had in common and they said, you know, we get up in the morning and you get as much as you can get out of that day and at the end, 
the day, you know, you can go to sleep knowing that you've done the best you can and done as much as you can. And it was really a pivotal moment for us. And, uh, and also, you know, I think it was even more poignant because Maynard was such a strong supporter of this music and it, and it meant the world to him. And um, that was, it literally was a turning point for us. And um, we looked at all of the people that were there from um, Jesse Jackson, Maxine Waters, uh, Bill Clinton, and all of these people, and they all shared, you know, the same message. And it was just such an inspiration for us that, yeah, we, we started then and we haven't looked back, so. Wow. And we also think that we, that is people, ultimately make time for what's most important to them. So we can say, well, I don't have time to do this. Or, but ultimately, you what you value is reflected in what you do, not what you say you want to do. It's what you actually do. And so we want to model what we believe is most important to us. I think, too, you know, jazz is, is it's people music. It's about the human experience. And, you know, being about the idea of leaving this place a better place than it was, you know, than the way we found it before we got here. And it's just, I think, for me, I just, I enjoy that now. Um, the music that we do is a gift, and we are very much aware of that, and the idea is to share that and hope that that can impact people in some way that it can be beneficial for them. Absolutely. In fact, that's a good point that we can... Uh listen to some more of, of Gary and, and Veronica's uh, new CD, Seasoning, and um, share some of this wonderful music with our listeners. This is 89.3 WRFG. It's jazz on WRFG 89.3 FM because life is too short for ordinary music. <laughs> 